Welcome everyone. For today's prep, we're going to see how to calculate the second derivative. So we've started to learn all these derivative rules to help us calculate, well, if we're given a function to calculate its derivative, well, now we're going to see how to calculate the second derivative, and we're going to be able to reuse all those rules to help us. So we have here the definition of the second derivative of a function. And the, the name we give this new type of derivative, we call it f double prime. All right, so how do we calculate this thing? Well, it's the derivative of the derivative. So it's the derivative of the first derivative, and we get our second derivative. So you can think of this almost as like a, a chain. We start with our function f. So there's our original function. And, or let's, uh, we'll just say f of x. And we saw we have all these different rules to kind of help us, but we, we know that we can take a function and with all of those different techniques, we can differentiate and we get something that we call f prime of x. And this was the derivative, or more specifically, this is the first derivative. All right, so this is just a brand new function. And so we can take this brand new function, this, this formula that we have, and just repeat the process. We can differentiate that. So when we do that, we get something we call f double prime. And this is the second derivative. Okay. So we start with our original function f, do some work, differentiate it. We get f prime of x, which is a brand new function, which we call the first derivative. And then we take that brand new function, differentiate that, and we get our second derivative. All right, so let's try this out. Let's, uh, let's try a couple of examples here. So we're going to find the second derivative of these two functions. So let's actually start with the, the easier of the two. So let's start with the second one here. So the function here, f of x, the original function we're going to start with, the formula is 2x plus 1. All right, so let's calculate f prime. So we're going to do one derivative, and that's going to give us f prime of x. All right, so this equation... We can think of it a few ways, but this is really mx plus b. So we know when we have a, a line equation like that, the derivative just tells us the slope of the line. So in this case, the derivative is, no, not m. <laughs> it's 2. It's the number in front of the x. Um, or you could think of this kind of going back to our derivative rules. The derivative of 2x is 2 times 1. And then the derivative of that plus 1, that's all by itself, the constant all by itself, derivative of that is just 0. Okay. So our first derivative here is just 2. Derivative of 2x is 2. And then the derivative of the plus 1 is, is 0. All right. So then we can repeat it. Do another derivative process. So now we're going to forget about our original function. And we're just going to take this first derivative that we have here. So this is our first derivative and just a brand new formula. So let's differentiate that. All right. Well, now we're going to get something we call f double prime. And all there is to this formula is we just have a constant that's all by itself. So when we differentiate a constant all by itself, no variable there, derivative is just zero. So our second derivative is just 0. And technically, there's things called the third derivative and the fourth derivative and the fifth derivative and so on and so on. And you just keep repeating this process. Um, all right, let's try the, the first one here. This one will be a little, there will be a little bit more to this one. All right, so we've got the function x cubed plus 1 over x. So before we differentiate, 
it's usually a good idea to rewrite these fractions at, with a negative exponent. So that, that might be the only bit of work I do to get uh, before we start doing any derivatives. So let's use a negative exponent there. So we're just going to rewrite this formula first. So the x cubed, that's fine. We can just do regular power rule on that. But we're going to write that 1 over x as x raised to the minus 1. So remember, negative exponents, there's kind of a hidden exponent of 1 there. So if we get rid of the fraction, we keep the exponent, but then we just make it negative. All right, so now, now we're ready to differentiate this thing. So let's do one, one derivative. And now we're going to be able to put to use some of those derivative rules we've seen. So the first term here, let's differentiate that. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Okay, so we differentiate the x cubed. Then, now we go on to the next term, the x minus 1. So we're going to do power rule over there. So we're going to bring down the negative 1, keep x the same, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So we get negative 1 times x raised to the negative 2. And we differentiated the first term. We differentiated the second piece. And then there's a plus sign in the middle. So we're going to have a plus sign in the middle here. OK, so not bad. Let's uh, simplify this, though, before we go on and do the second derivative. So I'm just going to rewrite this. The 3x squared is fine, but I'm just going to rewrite this times negative 1. I'm just going to change that to subtraction. So this will be negative x raised to the minus 2. OK, so that's our first derivative. We have here f prime. So we've calculated the first derivative. Now we're ready to do the second derivative. And let's use this modified, simplified version of our first derivative here. So now we're going to do it again. This is just a brand new formula that we have. So we just repeat the process. And when we do it, we're going to get a new function we call f double prime. This is going to be our second derivative. All right, so let's start with the first piece here, the 3x squared. The 3 is a constant multiple, so that just kind of sticks around in front. And then the derivative of the x squared, well, if we do our power rule, derivative of that is 2x. All right, so we got our derivative of the first term there. And then for the second term, we're going to bring the negative 2 down, put it in front of the x, keep x the same, and then we're going to subtract 1 in the exponent. So we're going to get negative 3. And then this formula had a, a subtraction. So this formula will have subtraction there. And this is our second derivative. Now, probably helpful just to kind of simplify that down. And maybe you do this in your head as you're doing it anyways. I'm probably showing a little more work here than you most likely would do. So you would probably just, you probably wouldn't have this. And then you, for the second derivative, you probably just multiply the 3 and the 2 together right away. So we would end up with 6x. And then over here, this would be a double negative, so that just becomes plus. So plus 2x raised to the negative 3. And we've got our second derivative there. All right, so that's the idea. We just, for to calculate the second derivative, we just do the derivative process twice. We start with our original function. We go through our process once to get the first derivative. And then that gives us a brand new formula that we have. So we just do the derivative on that. And that what that's what calculates the second derivative for us. All right, so a little bit about the notation here. Um, so for our first derivative, we've seen we use prime, so y prime or f prime. And then we also have this Leibniz notation, dy dx or uh, d dx of function f. So the, the notation for second derivative, well, kind of what you'd expect. 
we use double prime. So if we're talking about y equals f of x, we could say y double prime for our second derivative. We could say f double prime. Or if uh, we, we want to use Leibniz notation, we could use, well, these symbols here. And it's not, this isn't not a, it's not a squared. So this isn't like d squared y over dx squared. These aren't squareds. This is just notation saying, do the second derivative of function y with respect to x both times. Or do the second derivative of function f both times with respect to x. So that's how you kind of want to read those. Just like with the first derivative, it's do the derivative of function y with respect to x. Um, all right, so we'll practice a little bit more of this in class. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.